Good afternoon. It's Wednesday, the 8th of April, 2015, just after one o'clock. Welcome to UK Column News. I'm your host today, Brian Gerrish. With me in the studio behind the technical desk is Nick Green. And uh, we're going to be joined by live uh, Skype link with Justin Walker, um, a staunch member of the British Constitution Group, long term UK column supporter. And um, he's been doing some uh, great work, not only around the Bradbury pound, but also to encourage people to get out tackling their MPs in the run up to the election um, using the vehicle of flying columns. Are you there, Justin? Let's just check. Uh... Hello, Brian. Yes, I'm here up in the Yorkshire Dales. We haven't got the best technology up here, so my voice may be a little bit distorted, but hopefully you can hear me. I can hear you. So that, that's very good. Well, perhaps at some stage um, they will manage a little bit of fast broadband in amongst <laughs> the sheep and fields. Uh, well, we thought we'd kick off today with... Um, uh, a look at what the BBC thinks is news. So we just took a raw shot of the BBC News website and um, I'm afraid we've had to label it dross reporting of no substance. There's some nonsense about Labour scrapping non-domicile status. Uh, we've got a little bit on what the name Conservative means. Uh, then we're down into um, uh, complete... Uh, complete nonsense. I'm having to choose my words carefully about BAFTAs. Um, and then we've got some little video clips which seem to be pretty meaningless. And tucked away in the bottom is an important article uh, about exit checks beginning at UK borders. But of course, there's no proper analysis on the risks of this. Uh, it's simply uh, following the government line. So we'll say to people, as we always do, just don't watch it anymore. Um, clearly, the BBC is the British government's uh, nudge organisation and uh, really little credibility. Well, we're going to hit the Guardian newspaper hard as well, because um, this was pointed out to us, um, an article by a lady called Chella Quint. And we are saying that uh, this uh, lady is in yet another Guardian attack on children's minds. And according to her, the big issue is menstruation. And um, there's got to be a, a massive uh, input of education on this subject into uh, schools and classrooms. It's taboo. It needs to be dealt with. And Inset is uh, part of the uh, Guardian's uh, Twitter photograph, which is uh, showing, um, I think it's a panty liner pinned to a tree. Uh, and this is in India. So this is not just... Um, what's got to happen for children in British schools. This is part of a global agenda which thinks uh, this subject, uh, along as we have constantly reported with uh, utter, other matters sexual, needs to be rammed into children's minds. Uh, so I believe the lady is a comedian, uh, but of course The Guardian is presenting her as somebody that we should be paying attention to. Well, should we? We'll leave that open for our viewers uh, to comment on. Well, that leads us in uh, to matters which are serious and probably the best uh, person to put on screen at this point is the Home Secretary, Theresa May. Now, UK Column has warned uh, for a very long time that we consider this lady to be one of the most dangerous people in British politics. Uh, of course, there's the uh, shiny upfront image of smart suits and uh, power dressing and uh, attractive shoes. Uh, but we have warned and we are warning again that this is the woman uh, building a police state in Britain by stealth. Uh, so um, this is uh, part of the Home Office website. Um, here she is in a glowing check jacket. Uh, but let's have a look at what's indicated on this front page. Uh, we've got Theresa May now imposing prison camp Britain. Uh, we don't seem to be able to control who comes into the country. We don't really have any proper background checks on who comes in. But we're now going to have strict controls on British people leaving the country. And uh, indeed, we had a phone call a few days ago from somebody uh, working for the Department of Work and Pensions who seem to indicate that there's now collaboration between DWP and the government. 
So if you owe any money through the DWP system, you're not going to be able to leave the country on holiday. If we could just pop that one back on briefly, Nick, um, let's have a look at what else we've got on this uh, um, illustrious front page. Well, we've got this one here because uh, Theresa May is saying that she's going to build a stronger Britain and it's going to be built on our values. And we just wonder whose values she's talking about. Is she talking about fraud, corruption, child abuse, lies and deceit, which are clearly the values of David Cameron's uh, lib conservative uh, government? Or is she talking about um, the values of people hidden in the shadows that we don't even know about? Well, it gets interesting. We've also got this lady. Um, and of course, this is the New Zealand judge brought in um, as a safe pair of hands to handle embarrassing Westminster child abuse uh, allegations. So we say keep your eye very much on Theresa May. This lady is building a police state by stealth. And uh, the best way of countering that, of course, is exposing exactly what she's doing. Justin, um, yes. before we expand that a bit, any comments that you may have on the uh, lovely Theresa May? I, I think uh, she's manoeuvring herself for a post-Cameron era. I think she views herself as a Margaret Thatcher part two. Uh, as you say, I think she's a very dangerous lady. Do you think there's a real possibility of her taking over leadership of the Conservative Party? Well, I don't know who else there is. There's nobody that really springs to mind at the moment, and she's managed to keep, well, for a Home Secretary, isn't she the longest surviving Home Secretary ever or something? She's done a good job, in inverted commas, keeping her, well, basically keeping her portfolio clean. So I think she's got a very good chance, and, of course, she'll use her femininity to perhaps make her push. I, 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 I seriously think she is a contender, yes. Uh, well, I'll just say, um, presumably, it's pretty easy to keep your portfolio clean if you're actually controlling the courts, you're controlling the Crown Prosecution Service, yeah. and ultimately you're controlling the police, but maybe that's a little bit... Well, I, I think it's fair to say, um, like with the financial institutions, it's a house of cards, but once the truth comes out, it'll all just collapse overnight. So, she, you know, I'm, I'm very optimistic that we will have removed the problem by then. Right. Justin, I know that uh, you get out and about um, in your local area quite a bit. Yeah. You're speaking to many business people. You're speaking to farmers, uh, quite a wide selection of people in the community. What's your uh, feeling about um, uh, people at the moment, their views on the election? Do they uh, actually know it's happening? They know it's happening and they're bored to death. Um, I mean, we are pushing against an open door. The people I talk to, and as you say, it ranges from farmers to business owners, they have no time for the bankers. They have absolutely no time for the politicians. Um, many of them are unhappy with the European Union, not all, but most of them. And, I, I you know, the child abuse thing, uh, the paedophiles and everything else, they are now just shrugging their shoulders and thinking, how can it get worse? Um, it's only the BBC and the mainstream media who are trying to make the general election interesting. I mean, it's interesting, Five Live have just been to Dewsbury, and they were talking to a successful businessman um, who's got a, um, a, a, a sort of carpet warehouse type thing, a furniture warehouse, and he's had his family business going for 30 years, and he said, I've never voted in my life, and I don't intend to. I don't want to encourage them. So out there, uh, the time is ripe for a new movement, a movement based on common sense, common decency, and the common law. And I believe once people get to hear our message, we're pushing against an open door. And what the other side is assembling will collapse like a house of cards. Well, this, this is a very important issue, of course. We, we also get many calls uh, and emails from people saying, well, what can we do? Our message has consistently been to expose the truth about what's happening in the country. And then ultimately, we've got to make a judgment on uh, who represents us on, on a deeply personal basis. Are they trustworthy? Do they tell the truth? Are they the sort of people that you would uh, like to have running a country and looking after the safety and welfare of your family? Um, the, the mainstream political parties to us seem to be the, uh, 
the the uh, root of the problem. The, yeah, once the whips are. get in control, uh, then the values disappear out the door. Absolutely right. Uh, it's interesting that uh, Brian May of um, the Queen, I'm not a great follower of that sort of music, but he's trying to start a campaign of common decency. And he's asking people to select the most common, well, the decent candidates. Well, I wish him well, because as soon as a candidate is a part of the party system, they are no longer decent. Uh, they are playing around with something which is basically being set up to uh, control us, and to control us by very unfair means. Um, no, I, as I said, I think the party political system has to go, and the ideal would be to have a parliament made up of independent MPs, people who are who will have genuine, hold genuine debates, and people who will listen to the argument. At the moment, we have none of that. Right. Well, certainly agree with that. Let's um, dig deeper into uh, what Theresa May has been up to. And thank you very much to the viewer who alerted us to this. It was a Guardian advert for a job, and the job is a chief executive of the police ICT company. Um, the police ICT company registered as a company limited by guarantee. And uh, this is basically going to be one huge organisation controlling all of the police um, IT information. And uh, where has this come from? Well, it's come direct from uh, Theresa May. She launched this project back in July 2012. It then had uh, major problems. Uh, but now it is coming to fruition. Very few people know about this. Here we are, Police ICT Company. Now, the aim of this was to be able to draw in all uh, 43 of the police and cr uh, crime commissioners. Uh, being set up, as I've just said, as a proper company. So we've got a company board. Uh, we understand from information um, available on the internet at the moment that the chairman is Essex PCC Nick Alston. And then the rest of the board members at the moment uh, include Alan Michael from South Wales, Martin Surrey from Gloucestershire, Stephen Greenhow from London, Deputy Mayor Policing and Crime, Millie Banerjee, British Transport Police, Steve Dakin, Chair of the CIO Council, Mark, Mike Barton, Durham Chief Constable. Um, and uh, this is the key point. They're still working to appoint the... Um, uh, chief executive at the moment so we will watch with interest to see uh, who they get for this job but if you read the Guardian spec it's not so much about policing and protecting the public and being an upstanding civil servant all of the language is about entrepreneurship uh, corporations this is essentially more big business uh, deliberately uh, strapped around Britain's police force so we had a look in with a, a little bit more for a little bit more detail and uh, we came up with this website. This is gov.net uh, where they were talking about a conference on Tuesday, the 13th of January 2015. And um, this was all about um, information technology in the government. And we discovered this slot here, 1005, procuring ICT effectively to boost frontline policing ensuring seamless transfer of how police procedure accredited access to ensure safe and secure ordering home office digital strategy ensuring transparent access well that's a bit of an oxymoron from the conservatives um, new innovations across the police uh, this is going to benefit frontline policing laptops smartphones tablets mobile device manage management and janine uh, sorry, Jenny Cronin, the project uh, director there for Police ICT. So we followed her through. Here she is. And um, she's had a very interesting career, starting out as a scientist in Plessy. She's been a Northamptonshire police officer. She's worked in the Home Office. Um, she's been part of um, NPIA, another uh, police organisation, and then through as director for the ICT programmes but also in, in, um, involved with Working Links and their Deputy Director Profession Major Projects Authority in the Home Office. Are you dealing with a company or the government? It's always different to difficult to tell. 
But we were very interested by this working links thing. I'll read this, the text a little bit slow. Working links established in 2000 to deliver specialist and tailored services for people with varying and often complex needs to enable them to create better futures for themselves. As a prime contractor delivering key government programs across the UK, we work alongside funders, including the Department for Work and Pensions, Ministry of Justice, Skills Funding Agency, and the European Social Fund. So are they government? Are they a quango? Very difficult to tell who's this lady really been working for. And then this is the other one. If we go down into working links, our leadership and industry expertise is evident in our unique structure. We're a public, private, and voluntary company. We're everything, apparently. Our public share sector is managed by the government shareholder executive on behalf of the Secretary of State for Work and Pension. And our private sector shareholders are Manpower and uh, Capgemini. And a voluntary sector share is owned by Mission Australia. So I'll just give a little bit more and then uh, Justin, I'll ask you for some comment on this. So we thought we'd have a look at Capgemini. Here they are. These are some of the people in charge, uh, run by a French businessman. Uh, so we'd say now, what is the impact on uh, British government? And uh, if we come back to this lady, Jenny Cronin, um, what is she really working for? Well, it could be the shareholder executive, Department for Business Innovation and Skills, uh, and their aim is to be an effective shareholder of businesses owned or part owned by the government and to manage the government's interventions in the private sector in order to steer best value. Or we could be into working links and that brings us back into the Capgemini and this interesting little organisation uh, which is the Mission Australia. So for some reason we've now got a an organisation looking after family violence in Australia is working within the Home Office about ICT. It's very confusing. What do you make of it, Justin? What I was going to say, and I was thinking to myself, this is all part of a, a, the creeping corporatization of all aspects of our government. When I said to myself, it's not creeping, it's a full-blown charge. What we're seeing now, on a daily basis, we are seeing our sovereignty taken away from us by the corporate mindset. And they're finding every way possible to take away from the government. The government is there to serve the people. It's about service. And what we're seeing here, the service is being handed over to the for-profit state. And I'm sorry with the corporate state. And, and we've got to stop it. And this is what you're doing such an excellent job. And we're connecting the dots now. And as again, I do emphasize, it's going to be a house of cards because when people wake up to the reality of how they've been deceived over the last 40, 50 years, then people are going to say, hang on a moment, we've just been taken down a cul-de-sac and, and we've got to go back. And the whole thing is going to collapse. Justin, um, full-blown charge. I think you're right on that. This was creeping in. Uh, common purpose, of course, that very pernicious uh, political charity was was a key part of starting to break down our civil service and public institutions. Now, this is a rampant attack uh, with people, as common purpose would say, now operating outside their authority. One of the key um, levers that the government is using to get all this in is, of course, saving money, uh, mm. cost cutting efficiencies. Austerity Cut measures. Yeah. Austerity. Now, this is a lie. We know it's a totally. lie. Yeah. How could the Bradbury Pound assist us to um, uh, basically expose what the government is doing? Well, uh, I mean, it, 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 the wonderful thing is the Bradbury Pound is an historical precedent. It's fact. It's not a theory. It's factual. And overnight, the Bradbury Pound can provide the liquidity needed for the lawful economy of this country. And that means providing the liquidity needed for jobs, for our infrastructure, for our armed forces, for our national health service, for basically to ensure a prosperous economy and uh, basically a happy people, because people would be happy and prosperous. And it can be done overnight. Everything to do with austerity measures is based on a complete lie. Uh, and, and it, you know, I, at times, I'm not an economist, 
But the simplicity of the Bradbury is what's going to win the day because, as I said, I talk to a lot of people who, when they hear financial news and everything else, they just switch off because they don't understand it, derivative markets and all the things going on. Um, but with the Bradbury, when you explain it to them and you say this is what was actually done before, the quest first question they ask is, well, why aren't we doing it now? And this is, this is what I'm saying. The Bradbury pound is going to be the knockout blow for the corporate mindset that's trying to enslave um, our, our, our country. You have um, you've given a talk or you gave a talk last year to mm. Mensa on the subject of the Bradbury Pound. And of course, the Mensa um, organisation is supposed to be dealing with some of the most intelligent people in the country. Uh, were they able to grasp the significance of the Bradbury Pound? Well, they, they did. They did. They gave me a very warm applause. And they afterwards did say it made perfect sense. Now, whether those people are now going to pursue that and actually try and do something, that's another question. Uh, but no, everyone you talk to who is outside the system thinks it makes perfect sense. Those people who are defending the system, will, well, they, they just can't get their heads around it, or they can, but they don't want to admit they can because they know that once they do, everything they've been taught, everything they've been practicing, basically collapses. Right. Um, OK, we'll move on through. We're a little bit short of time. But of course, if we're cutting um, costs, then the military have been he heavily targeted by David Cameron. Uh, he's got rid of our aircraft carriers. He's got rid of the Nimrod aircraft. He's got rid of uh, thousands of uh, troops on the ground. At the same time, of course, he's standing on a world stage uh, accusing President Putin and Russia of being immensely dangerous. Uh, David Cameron has been cutting Britain's armed forces. Uh, we couldn't resist this article from the uh, Plymouth Herald, uh, which is boasting that HMS Ocean has just uh, finished a, a refit and she's back out for a big um, NATO ex uh, exercise with about 13 countries. And uh, we just say it's remarkable that this ship is now being labelled as a flagship for the Royal Navy. What have we got? We've got a 16-knot uh, assault ship that has six helicopter operating <laughs> slots and this ship is now being uh, pushed as uh, the lead ship in the Royal Navy. So we are at a very, very dangerous point. And of course, last week, uh, UK Column was warning that senior military people we know are really up in arms behind the scenes at what David Cameron is doing. But of course, an almost total media blacked out, blackout on the concerns of those uh, senior people. Well, if we're talking the military, we could nicely switch to Prince Andrew. Of course, he served as a helicopter pilot with the Royal Navy. And we just like to point out that, um, well, any surprises because an American judge has ordered that all of the sex allegations about Prince Andrew and underage sex should be struck out of the uh, Virginia Roberts case. So no surprises for the uh, prince there. Presumably a few phone calls from Buckingham Palace to the White House and everything was uh, quietly organised. Uh, so the allegations that a 17-year-old was forced to have sex with Britain's Prince Andrew, which prompted a crisis at Buckingham Palace earlier this year, has gently been removed from a federal court case by a judge in the US, Judge Kenneth Mora, ordered Virginia Roberts' accusations about Andrew, the Duke of York, to be struck from the record and denied her attempt to join a lawsuit against Jeffrey Epstein, a friend of the Prince and a convicted sex offender. So we have a senior member of the British royal family, friends with a known and convicted sex offender. Uh, but if you uh, are well connected in the establishment, no problems. Well, the reality of what's happening in Britain, of course, gets worse by the day. We have consistently supported the mother and her partner in the Hampstead child abuse case. And we'd like to encourage people to have a look at this um, very interesting video, uh, which is posting uh, what it says is evidence that Judge Palfrey um, ignored in her uh, recent judgment which um, said there was no abuse of the children. Well, it ignored the medical evidence that abuse had taken place. 
And of course, the, pub, the press then published that anybody who dared comment on this case uh, was into myth and conspiracy theory. So if you do look at this video clip, you can see at an earlier ruling uh, concerning, a, uh, uh, concerning a father of these children in which it appears that he was uh, accused of uh, uh, some pretty unpleasant behavior. But uh, apparently in the secret family court over which Judge Pulfley uh, presided, um, this evidence didn't seem to come to light. Uh, a quick comment from you, Justin. Well, I, as I said to you before, it's it's a house of cards, and, and people are waking up to what's going on. I mean, with the Holly Gregg case, um, that's going to collapse the SNP in one go. So all this talk about the SNP having 40 MPs and holding our country to ransom. Once people get to hear about Holly, Gre Holly Gregg, Robert Green how Alex Salmond lost vital evidence and everything else, that's going to completely discredit uh, that side of things. With what's going on in Hampstead, again, it's all part of this very, very, very nasty black hole that people are now looking into, and they can see that it's not good. And, well, it just gives me the shivers. I saw those two children give their interview, and, and it just made me, well, I, I, I tell you, I, I, I felt dreadful when I, I watched it. Yeah. So, yes, I think it's all, it's, it's, it's all going to unravel very quickly. And uh, I believe their house of cards is going to collapse. Right. OK, well, we just add a little bit more to this. Um, I suppose not surprisingly, the Humanist Society has now jumped on the bandwagon to deny that there's any substance to the ritual abuse of children. Uh, it's all contrived. It's all make belief. You've said you've heard the testimony of those two children, eight mm. and nine, serve I. Uh, but of course, it's there in the background for Holly Gregg and many other cases. Uh, well, here's reality. Um, I think this is um, the Northeast Chronicle. Uh, apologies for Chronicle Live, but you can find this easily enough through Google. Uh, there's, they have got an excellent story about the Medemsley Detention Centre. Uh, it's now saying that the child abuse investigation is the biggest in UK. Notice this word probe that's constantly being used. It's got no real substance. It's not a full police investigation. This was the detail. The investigation was into assaults on inmates at the Medemsley Detention Centre. They are saying it's now the biggest abuse inquiry in UK at uh, 1,123 men who were physically or sexually assaulted. We disagree with that because many of the other uh, Rotherham, North, uh, Nottingham abuse inquiries are up to that sort of level. Uh, but we want to say here, if you really want to see what Medemsley was about, do watch uh, Bill Maloney's pie and mash film, Adam Rickwood and the Medemsley's Heroes, uh, which gives a lot of detail. And more evidence coming out. This is Brian Gemmel, Gemmel, former Army Intelligence Officer, and he is stating that MI5 hid child abuse at the boys' home, uh, King Cora, in Northern Ireland. Um, so this was the cover-up of the paedophile ring. And um, he spoke out during a meeting with victim Richard Kerr, uh, who claimed he was essentially trafficked from Northern Ireland uh, to the Westminster Dolphin Square paedophile gang. Uh, picture in set of King Cora Home. And we're going to add to this one a really excellent book uh, written by Paul Foote, but the book is about a gentleman called Colin Wallace. Who framed Colin Wallace? Uh, Colin Wallace, another army officer operating in Northern Ireland in uh, the very early 80s, who said that MI5 stopped him from exposing the abuse of children, including in the King Cora home. So there we are, utter corruption, not only in the higher levels of British government, but of course, we've got a total establishment and political base uh, covering up the abuse of children. We simply cannot trust these people on any other policy. And I'll end on the note that um, last week we put out a warning that uh, we'd received many professional reports from ex-police in particular saying the state intended to try and whip up violence on the streets, in particular in Rotherham, and they were going to use the child abuse paedophilia issue, particularly between uh, whites and Asians, 
in order to do that. Um, that report from UK Column, I've got John Shackleton uh, with me in the shot, uh, has now reached over 56,000 views. And I think people are beginning to, to pay attention to our warnings. Uh, yeah, could I just come in? 30 second uh, final comment from you, Justin. Lovely, good. Well, I have just literally put out today a um, basically it's part two of the Flying Columns and the Golden Pinocchio Awards initiative. It's entitled 30 Days to Polling Day and Action This Day, Action Without Delay. I'm putting it out on all the different websites that we have. So could I ask people to, to read it? It gives lots of practical advice on how to take the fight to the, the politicians and to basically go up to them, ask, to basically ask questions, difficult questions about the Bradbury, about child abuse, about what's going on in the courts, etc., and literally put the wrongdoers on the back step to expose them, and then hopefully we'll have a lot of good Golden Pinocchio footage uh, which will wake people up to just how corrupt and rotten the whole political system is. So can I please ask people to look out for that, and please, please, please get involved, get your flying columns organised, and get out there and find the politicians who we know have a lot to hide, and we need to expose it. Uh, brilliant. Thank you very much for that, Justin. Well said. We'll leave it there. It's not just a question of reporting what's happening in the country. We need all of our listeners and viewers to get digging. Please send us the information that you find. If we can expose what's going on, we're well on the way to solving the problem. And we need to bring our politicians, senior police officers and judges to account, certainly over the cover up of the abuse of Britain's children. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back uh, same time tomorrow. Bye-bye.